Casey Anthony defense opened her floor to trial by claiming she didn't murder her toddler, but lied about the accidental drowning because Casey had been sexually abused by her own father, George Anthony. Well, today the defense rested, but not before calling out George Anthony once again, this time accusing him of an adulterous affair. Here's ABC's John Donvan for our series, Crime and Punishment. Is it your decision not to testify based upon uh, consultation with your counsel? Yes, sir. Those two words today, and she would repeat them as the question was put to her more than once. Yes, sir. They told us that this, after all, is yes, sir, is all we're going to hear from the murder defendant, who by the time the defense rested Ladies today, after two weeks of testimony, seemed by her silence to have left an awful lot unexplained. As in, why, when her daughter Kaylee disappeared, she, the mom, went out partying? Why she blamed the disappearance on a nanny named Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez, Z-E-N-A-I-D-A, -A. who does not exist? Why she then insisted that Kaylee had died in an accidental drowning. Why she accused her father George, a former cop, of disposing of the body and then on top of that accused him of sexually abusing her when she was a little girl. Her father came into her room and began to touch her inappropriately. Have you ever sexually molested your daughter? No, sir. On top of that, her lawyer today calls a woman named Crystal Holloway claiming to have had an affair with George, her father, who is married. Was this an intimate relationship? Yes. And to put yourself in George Anthony's place, it's awful. And we saw that on the stand yesterday when, yet one more time, they took him through the events of the day that he learned his granddaughter's body had been found. Up to that moment, had you held out the hope that Kaylee would be found alive? Absolutely. Every day from July 15th until the day we were told it was Kaylee. And all during these minutes on the face of his daughter, nothing. Which is such a dramatic contrast to the father-daughter story that was told earlier in this trial. The jailhouse scenes that the prosecution built into its case. Except for the bulletproof glass that separated them, they were obviously shoulder to shoulder at that point. You were the best father and by far the best grandfather that I've ever, I've ever met. And he clearly loved his granddaughter. The day she was born, with no father present, George and his wife Cindy were there at the hospital, and they loved her, swam with her in the pool, as seen in video licensed by ABC News. And during those days after Kaylee disappeared, George was out front in the searching and in keeping the public on alert, all of which Casey saw before she was arrested and charged with murder. But once the trial started back in May, he became a father in a terrible position, one of the prosecution's best witnesses as they sought the death penalty for a daughter he does not want to die, and whose side was depicting him as a villain. They said he had molested his daughter and doing so turned her into a liar. They say he talked her into covering up the little girl's death. He had to witness hearing his son being accused of also molesting Casey. But he held together until the emotional crumbling that we've seen this week. Need a break, Mr. <laughs> no, sir, I need to get through this. I need to have something inside of me get through this. And his admission that he had bought a gun at one point and checked into a motel and had written out a suicide note. Late January of 2009, you attempted to commit suicide. Did you, sir? Yes, sir, I did. Today, there were no tears, as he heard Crystal Holloway say not only that he had had an affair with her, but that he had told her things about Kaylee's disappearance. He had said it was an accident that snowballed out of control. A story that began to fall apart under cross-examination, along with Holloway's credibility. You had no choice but to tell the truth. But you lied. Yes, sir, I did lie. So, it's the sense of the courtroom that George Anthony has successfully fended off these accusations of adultery and sexual abuse. I think the defense would have been far better off from the beginning simply saying this was an accident rather than pointing the finger at George Anthony in the way that they did and now coming up as short as they did. But the truth is, his daughter's lawyers needed those charges to stick because in terms of a defense, Making George a bad father and husband, it was all they had. Your Honor, the defense rests. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Washington.